I want to talk about allowed boundary conditions and behavior for the wave function psi. So if we have a step potential like this uh, here, uh, the wave function, uh, what kind of behaviors can it have at that step? And it has to satisfy the Schrodinger's equation. So let's ask, for instance, can psi be discontinuous? Will that still solve the Schrodinger equation? So for instance, if we have psi, which looks like maybe some kind of step function here, let's consider taking the derivative of that. So d psi dx, then, well, the slope is zero uh, over here, and the slope is zero there, and the slope is infinite at the discontinuity. Uh, and in fact, we get a delta function for the derivative of psi. Uh, if we take the second derivative of psi, so d squared psi dx squared, well, so now the slope is zero, but then we get infinite slope on the way up for the delta function, infinite negative slope on the way down in zero. So we get the derivative of a delta function uh, for our second derivative. And if this is a solution, then when we put it into the Schrodinger's equation here, we should still get a solution. Uh, and you kind of see this isn't going to work. Um, we're not going to be able to balance this derivative of delta function term with anything else in our Schrodinger equation. So psi has to be continuous. Okay, so can the derivative of psi be discontinuous? We know that psi has to be continuous. Can the derivative be discontinuous? So let's consider a wave function psi that looks like this. So it comes down and then comes up so that the derivative is discontinuous at this point but psi itself is continuous. So then the derivative of psi looks like a negative value until a positive value. So the derivative looks like a step function, looking at the slope. And then the second derivative of psi, well, now we look at the slope of the first derivative. And so it's zero until we hit the discontinuity and then it's infinite. So the second derivative is like a delta function. Again, imagine sticking this into Schrodinger's equation, and you can't solve this, you won't be able to solve Schrodinger's equation uh, if the derivative of the wave function is discontinuous. So we say that the derivative of the wave function must be continuous. Actually, it's a little bit of a cheat. Um, you can do this if the potential is a delta function, uh, and then you can balance this delta function term for the second derivative, and we'll talk about that in another video. So let's look at an example. So again, consider here a potential, which is a step, a discontinuous step for our potential. Let's call the region on the left region one and the region on the right region two. So a possible wave function that would satisfy our boundary conditions is a wave function that looks like it's coming in and then at the point where region one and region two meet, then the wave function and its derivative are continuously matched. So right at this point, uh, if we consider the wave function one and wave function two for region one and region two, right at that point, psi one at A must be equal to psi two at A. The wave function must be continuous. Its derivative, d psi one dx at A, must also be equal to d psi two dx at A. So again, the wave function and its derivative must be continuous at those points. Let's look at a, a kind of sick example, um, which we'll consider later. So let's consider a potential v of x for x that is, a, in fact, a delta function, a delta function pointing down. So v of x looks something like minus delta of x here. What does the wave function look like and how will it match? Well, so on the left, the wave function decays down to zero, same thing on the right, so that the function is normalizable. Um, at x equal to zero, the boundary between the two regions, uh, well, the wave function must still be continuous, psi one is equal to psi two at x equal to zero, but the derivative at zero does not have to equal uh, the same thing on either side. So the derivative in region one must not uh, or need not be the same as the derivative at region two at x equal to zero. And we'll see how that works in more detail in a future video.